Christian Parenting. Modesty is a virtue rarely talked about in our world today. Join us, along with our special guest, for this vital conversation on Family Vision. Hi, my name is Ray Reno. Welcome to Family Vision with my parents, Dr. Rob and Amy Reno. Strengthening families through practical, encouraging, and real conversations. Hi, this is Rob Reno with Visionary Family Ministries, together with my bride, Amy. It's great to be here with you today. And we are doing part two of a conversation on the issue of modesty. This is a virtue that seems to be in very low supply in our culture today, but perhaps, and even more concerning, is I think it's rarely discussed, even in our Christian churches, Christian schools. So rather than two parents sitting around talking about modesty, what are these kids wearing today? We thought it would be a more authentic and helpful episode to invite a very special guest to join us, our 17-year-old daughter, Lainey. Hello, everyone. Happy to be here. And she's actually almost 18, so I have to throw that in. So That's true. Yep. I think when everyone is listening to this, she actually will be. So I that's a so. big birthday. Yeah. Very much so. Now, as we said in the first episode, modesty is a virtue for both men and women, boys and girls. But especially in light of our guest today, we may spend more time talking about this as it relates to young women uh, or from a parenting perspective, thinking about our daughters. Lainey, as a senior in high school, you are making daily decisions in this area of modesty. And I just want to start with what are your like first thoughts and feelings you know, that come to mind when you even hear the word modesty? I think my initial thoughts when I hear or think about the word modesty is choosing to dress in an appropriate way, choosing to dress in a way that isn't going to draw attention to your body that you don't want that attention for. And so it's also certain feelings that come is it's hard sometimes and it's not always easy. Um, And that is something that I know we'll talk about later on and something that we'll work through. But also a specific word that I didn't use to think of when I heard the word modesty, but after having lots of conversations with my older sister, Lissy, as well as my mom, is the word classy. And I have just loved kind of using that word over the word modesty in a way because it's like modesty isn't just wearing clothes. Like you, you can have good fashion while still being modest and you can still dress in a classy, cute way while still being modest. And so I think that my mindset, thinking of the word modesty has switched um, a little bit over the years to that perspective a little bit more. I love that. that I a love great insight. hearing that word classy. But you already kind of alluded to this. It's even if you want to dress modestly mm-hmm. or let's say classy in this mm-hmm. current culture, It is hard to do. You know, I have been in many a dressing room with you (laughs) looking for especially formal dresses, dresses Mm -hmm. for that fun event or bathing suits. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a struggle. Talk about that a little bit. It absolutely is. I mean, there are just so many. I mean, especially dress shopping. If let's say I'm looking for formal event that's more of for a short type of cocktail dress, It's first about finding the right length that isn't going to be way too short, which is extremely hard to find. I mean, I just had a dance December and trying on so many dresses with my mom, so many things, and just having them be way too short and just like so not comfortable to wear in certain settings, not wanting to have to wear something that that's that is that short. And so it's definitely difficult to find these things. So A is just length of a dress. They're not made super long now, um, oftentimes. Um, Also, just lowness of a dress up top, Mm -hmm. trying to figure out where that's going to fit, but also wanting to feel beautiful and wanting to feel in style and wanting my friends to love my dress. Um, If I have a date to that dance, wanting my date to like that dress. So I think a lot of it, when I am shopping for things, shopping for bathing suits, shopping for dresses, bathing suits and dresses specifically are the things that are hardest for me, I would say. I think a lot of it is like, I do have this want to dress in a modest way, but then there's also this, I would even say spiritual attack as I'm shopping for things like this of, oh, well, this dress, because it is 
so covering here or it's like such a, a long length, you're not you're not in style. You yeah. don't look pretty in that. Like people are going to mock you yes. for having that. Um, and I think a lot of that is, again, spiritual attack, Satan giving me lies like, I will start to tell myself that I'm ugly. I'll start to tell myself that I'm never going to find a dress. I feel hopeless. I mm-hmm. often will cry because I'm like, oh, there's just <laughs> nothing here. It has happened. Yes, <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yes. So, yeah, I think it is difficult to find certain clothes that you feel pretty in and that you feel are in style, but also meeting either the guidelines you have for yourself or the parents or that your parents have for you. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I think on the parenting side, or I guess on the dad side, I think an area where I've fallen short at times, and I think dads can relate to this, is kind of going zero to 60. So mm-hmm. what I mean by that is like there may, there'd be weeks where I'm not engaged with you in having, you know, warm, open conversations, right, about uh, issues of modesty or, or dressing classy. And then maybe you come downstairs ready to head out the door, you know, and I'm like, hey, you can't wear that to school or, or that's not mm-hmm. appropriate. Now, that doesn't happen very often uh, <laughs> because we're super proud of how you're making your personal choices in this area. But my point is here that is when I've done that, it's been really unfair to you, mm-hmm. really exasperating for you to have me jump in like totally out of left field mm-hmm. without you know, months have gone by without conversations. That's inappropriate. Right. You can't wear that. And I'm not saying I don't have the right to do that, mm-hmm. but the problem is as a dad, if – if we're not having warm, like, partnership, ongoing conversations about clothing and makeup and all of that, it's really going to harm our relationship if we're just jumping in with this zero mm-hmm. to 60 harshness. Um, all right, while we're on the subject of relationship, let me ask both of you, how has this whole subject of clothes, modesty, classiness, makeup, especially during the teen years, affected your relationship as mother and daughter? That's a really good question. And It definitely has its challenges, doesn't it? I think one of the hardest things for me as a mom is is trying to convey to Lainey that I understand the struggle that she's in and having compassion for the struggle and trying to go that extra mile to help, you know, meet the standards of both classy and in style and just let her know I'm on her team because I think sometimes we're in the midst of that, it can start to feel like we're not on the same Mm -hmm. team and that causes problems. And the other thing I think it's really hard is when she gets dressed for the day and she spent a lot of time getting ready and she might look really great and I throw like that. I'm I'm at that like pivotal moment like do I let her go out with that or do I And again, Lainey makes you make so many great choices. It's more when we're in a certain situation like for example, mm-hmm. I have some strange rules when we lead worship at church. I have different rules for that setting than I would at other settings. And and sometimes, like you said, there's just not a lot of clear communication beforehand. So I'm throwing something at her last minute. Like mm-hmm. she spent a lot of time getting ready, and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, you can't wear that. I didn't mm-hmm. clarify that. And and then that creates, you know, tension yeah. with us. And it's not – and I have to sometimes decide, is it worth for me to stick to my guns and say, no, I don't want you to wear that, or is it better for me to let her – just where you know what I mean? You know, it's it's a situation by situation. I can't just mm-hmm. give one kind of standard for it. Right. And I would go back to what my mom was saying about trying to be on the same team with this because I think it's gotten a lot better um, since even my freshman year. Let's say going back to finding a dress for a dance situation. Let's say I find a dress and I feel beautiful. I love the way it looks. I'm really excited about it, but it's too low or it's too short. And my mom points that out and says, Lainey, I'm sorry. I really, I don't think that this dress can be your dress for the dance. And I think that a lot of times it's hard to get the issues with the dress before you do look really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it is a great option. Let's try and find something that is like this, but maybe has these categories as well. So that, and it's hard, I think, I think, for me, the hardest part was getting almost the the negativity before just even a simple compliment or a simple, that is beautiful. I, kn- yes. I know that you feel beautiful in that. However, I don't appreciate this about it. Maybe we can find a different option. And 
I think just having that understanding on both sides, and then of course I have to accept that and listen to that and choose how I'm going to react to that. But I think on both sides, having the understanding that you are on the same team, and I don't know, girls, if you are listening to this and moms who are listening to this, I know that you do want your girls or like you want your children to look attractive. You want them to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. I know that my mom wants me to feel good in the clothes that I wear. My mom wants me to feel beautiful and confident. And so just keeping that in mind that we are on the same team, I think has definitely helped growing through the relationship aspect of all of this. And also for me, like my mom was saying as well, having, I don't want to say different standards for different situations, but there are different, I mean, there are different social situations that do change the clothes that you're wearing. And it's not that I'm being necessarily more revealing or less revealing in certain situations. It's just the type of clothes or the look of the outfit. And I think I had to really come to that understanding of, okay, yeah, when I'm up front leading worship, I just need to go that extra mile and being even more conservative than I might have to when I'm just walking the halls of school. You know what I mean? Because it is a different... They are different situations, and so I think growing in my understanding of that has also helped the relationship aspect. Mm -hmm. And I think um, just to reiterate for moms out there how important it is, I know it's important for my girls to feel in style. Mm -hmm. That's really, really important, Mm -hmm. and I do think some – of us moms can Just make to it feel comfortable in their own skin. Well, mean? yeah, but also to be no, I mean literally to be in style, like up yeah. with the, with the trends. With the trends, yeah, and... because like that. Sometimes I think that becomes an issue with. You know, when moms don't understand that or value that and just say, oh, you can wear – I mean, yeah, you're going to be out of style, but, yeah, I need you to wear this type anyway. Mm-hmm. That doesn't help because it's understandable that girls want to dress according to the current trends. That's an understandable desire. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the relationship between modesty and attractiveness Mm -hmm. because I think this is what you're going at there, Amy, but there's nothing wrong with wanting to be attractive, right? Mm -hmm. That's That's a good thing in a healthy and godly way. And that's what 1 Peter 3 is talking about. 1 Peter 3 verses 3 through 5 says, don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is so precious to God. This is how the holy women of old made themselves beautiful. So this is why I think as parents, our conversations about this have to be more than that's not appropriate or Mm -hmm. you can't wear that or this is what you have to wear. But having some of the bigger conversations with your daughters and your sons, what do you want people to notice about you? Mm -hmm. What do you want people to be attracted to? You know, do you want them to be focused on your body or Mm -hmm. you, like who you are as a person? And one of the Mm -hmm. real concerns in our culture today is adults all the way down to teenagers are taught that their body is what makes them valuable Mm -hmm. or their body is what makes them attractive. So what you're supposed to do is highlight different parts of your body because that's what is going to win people to you or draw Mm -hmm. people to you or make you feel you know, feel good about yourself. So, Lainey, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, I agree with all of that. I think that it is so true, especially in the social media world as well, pictures that are posted or I used to have TikTok, I don't anymore, but TikTok dances, you know, outfits that girls choose to wear for those, even things like that that just highlight, you know, draws attention to your body. And that's not personally what I want. I want to really detract from that. And I do, of course, want talking to boys, talking to whoever it may be. I want them to, of course, be getting to know me, getting to know who I am as a person. And it's not that, oh, you're wearing a crop top, then guys aren't going to look at you for your personality. Guys are only going to be like, I don't want to over, you know, I I think it's important that that it's not always the situation. But I definitely think there are so many steps we can take in Dressing in a way that's going, especially with boys, talking about boys, and dressing in a way that's going to help them not be distracted by that. And I think something in our culture and that I see on social media a lot is like, it's the boy's choice not to look, or it's the boy's fault if they do look, or it is the boy's problem, it's boys, boys, boys. And 
to me, I mean, it's both sides. The girl can do things that can help her brothers in Christ to not be distracted Mm -hmm. with the clothes that you're wearing or how you're portraying yourself, how you're portraying your body. And I think it's just there's both sides. And I think there's an emphasis of our on our in our culture of, well, it really doesn't matter what I wear because it's the boy who looks and he just needs to not look and he needs to not have those awful thoughts that he has. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But Mm -hmm. there is both sides. And so, of course, like a lot of it is I want to dress in a way that helps them to Mm -hmm. not be distracted by that you know what i mean and not have because if they're walking in their relationship with the lord i mean everyone sins of course those thoughts can happen but we can but they don't want if they're truly having a relationship with the lord those thoughts don't want to happen and so we can help them in that and i think Mm -hmm. that that's definitely a big thing of showing more who you are on the inside in your personality rather than the outside i think it's been helpful to have brothers, you know, even in our own home, you know, the way that Lini and Lissy and Millie see how they're even their little brothers, you know what I mean? How they feel more comfortable when girls are dressed Mm -hmm. more modestly. And you Mm -hmm. can just experience that or see it in your brother, I think, in a way. And not Mm -hmm. necessarily everyone would have that perspective. But I I appreciate that we've been able to have these conversations in the context of family uh, relationships that has that's going back to what you said before. It's very helpful. But Lainey, do you have any? I mean, you've done such a great job, and we really appreciate you coming in and talking about this today. And do you have any final thoughts or something you'd want to st- say that you think would be helpful to to teen girls or girls of any age? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I think just the reminder that you can dress really cute and in a modest way and you can totally be in on the trends and the fashion and you can have your own style and your own fashion and um, start your own trends while being modest and it's not about covering every single part like it's not about that it's just about again dressing in a way that is trying to be the least amount of distracting to those things as possible and also just remembering that there are different situations that call for different things just remembering that always to look at yourself the way God sees you and don't get discouraged about clothes and about fashion. And if you are trying to, you know, take more steps to dress in a more modest way or you have been taking those steps and it gets discouraging sometimes, just remember that that those thoughts come to mind, but those aren't from the Lord. They're from the enemy. So just Mm -hmm. staying positive during those situations. What you're saying, I have to say, just reminds me of this kind of funny quote in an old movie called Working Women. And there's a line where the actress Sigourney Weaver says, dress shabbily and they notice the clothes, dress impeccably and they Mm -hmm. notice you. (laughs) And it's kind of the same thing of what you're saying, Lainey, you know, dress classy and they actually notice you more. Absolutely. And as opposed to noticing the clothes. Yep. You know, so... Well, Lainey, thanks for being willing to talk about uh, all this. We know it's not easy and it's a little bit of an uncomfortable conversation, but we're super <laughs> thankful for you and very, very proud of you. Um, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this subject. Drop us an email, podcast at visionaryfam.com, podcast at visionaryfam.com. And also, we have a new feature on our website that we think you are going to love. It is our free resource of the month. This month, we want to put in your hands an online seminar, Helping Your Teen Find Freedom from Anger. Helping Your Teen Find Freedom from Anger. This was a live seminar we offered here in Illinois, and the MP3 is available now as a free download for you. Just go to visionaryfam.com. Right on the homepage, you'll see free resource of the month. Click that link, and you can get this new digital download. Well, as always... Thank you for spending this time with us. We appreciate the relationship we have with you. And we look forward to our next time together on Family Vision.